What's going on traders? Today is Monday, March 13th, and we are a couple of days out from the SVB bank disaster, if you can call it that. Um, today, we're going to be going over the three trades that I took. We're going to be going over some of the zones of the things that I did today, my reasoning behind them, you know, entries, targets, why I did everything. And then um, that'll be it for today. So let's get right into it. Um, so I'm using uh, NinjaTrader still, still on my Apex account, uh, valuation account. Today I lost another $447, so I wanted to start with the trade performance. Um, $447.50. Um, out of the three trades today, I only had one winner, which was $101. And then my two follow-up trades were pretty significant. My second one was a $300 loss. Uh, $330 loss brought me down to like 248 negative, and then um, another loss at the end of the day. So I'm still feeling really uncertain about a lot of um, the markets since this has been happening. There's just so much volatility and so much uncertainty. Um, I'm just not experienced enough to really trade this with any confidence. And um, hopefully this video today will be able to give you some insight as to maybe why you shouldn't trade in, in times where you're uncertain or, you know, how things work, but I'm at least going to give you a perspective from a beginner trader like myself and at least start to, um, hopefully connect some dots for some people. And if, uh, you know, if I can be of help to anybody, that's great. And you can learn from my journey. That would be even better. Um, I guess we can start with a couple of these zones that I drew in. These, um, I w I, this morning I drew a couple of zones from pre-market. My first one started at like 7 o'clock. Um, these are my uh, FVG, fair value gaps, that um, basically what I'm looking for in these gaps is I'm looking for large price movements, um, basically in an area that hasn't been tested by um, any candlestick. So if you notice, the price kind of stopped here. But in this area right here, uh, the gap between where my cursor is here and the here, that's the height of the gap. Um, that is a fair value gap, I believe, um, basically showing areas that are untested with value. Um, so I have a small one here, had one here, had one here. Um, and I just extended these throughout the day. And I kind of use these as um, areas of not necessarily resistance or um, support necessarily, but more of uh, areas where I expect price to at least gravitate towards and through. I kind of use them as um, not indicators, but more as visual representations of, um, you know, possible liquidity that's left over in that in that zone. And what I'm looking for, and I and I kind of explain this further as we go through uh, my trades today. Um, we had a um, a resistance level or a support level right here at 851, um, and then again right after market opened at 943. Uh, this was a classic double bottom, and you know I saw this double bottom, but I was still scared um, just because of the volatility. I know it was super early, but uh, I mean if you're looking at this, this is the one minute chart, and so each one of these candles is one minute. So let's just right off the bat let's talk about the volatility that happened today um this candle alone right here at 948 went from 3851 to 3866 so that's a 14 point candle a one minute 14 point candle followed up by several five six ten minute candles throughout the day so if you're looking at these large candles green or red know that those that's a 60 second candle swinging about 10 to 15 points, which is if you trade um, the ES, you know that a 10 to 15 minute point candle in one minute is absurd. And that very rarely happens unless it's some sort of news or there's fear in the in the system. So today was just crazy, radical. I mean, the first couple of um, candlesticks, we had a bunch of wicks down here, um, just massive, massive scary movements. I mean, if you're getting into a trade, you know, these are the kind of trades that can stop you out in just a matter of seconds. And 
Um, I didn't make my first trade until about 11 o'clock when things started to slow down as we were approaching like um, lunch break. So the volume in my head was starting to decrease and I thought that'd be a better opportunity. Um, but as far as these fair value gaps, um, what I was looking for is basically, you know, if it blew through this fair value gap, you know, we see it interacting with this gap here uh, at the bottom of the gap. We see it interacting at the top of the gap um, and then breaking through and coming back down. And then as it's coming back down, it's wicking out into this bottom gap here. So it's almost, you know, there's probably a support line. As you can see from this area, there is a little bit of support from that previous resistance. Um, and that's able to bring it back up. And what tends to happen is I think it's using that, su um, that support from the previous uh, resistance to basically take off into the next zone, the fair value gap. Um, so again, you see a lot of the play that's happening in these gaps and it, it, throughout the day, it worked pretty well. I think it started to get a little bit better in the, uh, as the day went on, as it reacted to my gaps. Um, and so well, let's just go to this first trade here. Um, this first trade was significant because, um, we had a, um, pre-market high. I want to say at about seven o'clock. Yeah, about seven o'clock. That pre-market high was at 39.25. And so I was keeping an eye on that. And so what we're looking for here, um, I, I wasn't looking to short this candle right here. This is the first entry long on this long. Let me zoom in real quick. Make this a little bit better. Okay. Maybe that's not better. I'm going to zoom back out. Sorry. Okay. So um, what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at basically we're approaching the, um, you know, the pre-market high that we had a pretty hard rejection off of. So that's kind of what I'm keeping my eye on as I'm looking at the price. I'm not trying to long into that area. If anything, I'm looking for an opportunity to kind of get short, uh, at least for the first couple of attempts to get long in that area. So um, I was trading MES today, so micro contracts, not the ES. Um, this first one, this was my first win of the day. I ended up, um, as we uh, got close to this level here, I started to see a red candle. I started to see some selling pressure, and we were approaching 39.28. So we had actually kind of broken, uh, broken above that high. And I was expecting a reject back into this zone. So I played a quick scalp. Um, when I saw this candlestick, and I'm going to zoom in so you can actually see this now. Um, when I saw this candlestick right here, when I saw this candlestick right here, I knew that the buyers had barely won. They, the sellers had pushed them all the way back down here. And then I got in on this candle here. Um, it was a very quick scalp. But in hindsight, I could have, I, I exited right about here as we were approaching my zone. Uh, I just took my $100 and got out. Um, I was anticipating kind of a larger move, just considering it was kind of a high of day attempt. So I was hoping for a bigger move. But um, in hindsight, maybe that wasn't the best entry. Yes, there was one, two, and three entries long. So this was um, the, the, um, the rejection off of the third entry long here. Um, now the fourth attempt here, so the fourth attempt long ended up with a better selling pressure that ended up, you know, um, working a little bit better. So, um, you know, in hindsight, this whole zone, you know, if, if you zoom out again, um, this whole section right here was just a lot of consolidation, a lot of figuring out, you know, cause they're at, um, you know, we had made a move basically from this morning at 940 at open. Basically, we, we came up from 3840 all the way up to 3933, almost a 100 point move in a matter of an hour and a half, two hours. Um, so in hindsight, looking back at this, what I'm thinking is that, you know, we have buyers and sellers up here trying to negotiate to figure out if this 100, you know, this 100 point move in the morning was actually, you know, if people are still willing to buy at this price and if sellers are willing to sell here, um, I mean, a 100 point move 
in two hours is ridiculous. And, you know, I think, you know, normally you would see some sort of continuation through this zone. In your, in my experience, at least when it's not so volatile, the consolidation seems to be a little bit tighter, especially when you're at one of these, you know, zone, supply zones. Um, you don't have these huge rocket ships up, breakdowns up, down, like just real volatile and kind of confusing to me at the, at the highs. And um, again, just wasn't sure. So uh, I ended up not trading for some time. Um, notice how these zones are working as well, right? Um, we did end up having a breakdown of this zone. And, and notice this candlestick brought us from the middle of this zone right to the entrance of this one. Um, we play in the gap, we break into the middle of this zone, we go back to this zone almost as an attempt just to verify because basically you, as you break through an area, most of the time the market's going to see a correction back towards where you just broke out of. And so it's making sure like, hey, yes, we broke out of this area, but we need to make sure that when we go back up there, that the buyers are not or that the, the buyers are still not willing to buy at that price. And so what you're looking at is um you're looking at this attempt to try to recapture this zone just to prove yes that this zone the buyers are not here the sellers are winning at this area and then boom the sellers can bring you back down even further um same thing from here so we're in the middle of this zone we sell down to this the second fair value gap and then we come back up into the middle to test the highs of this zone realize the buyers still aren't present and then we come back down here now this will lead me into um, the, a trade that I wish I would have took. I believe this was the one, one of two trades today. I will talk about the second trade that I didn't take as well later in the day. This is the first trade I wish I had taken. And um, as easy as this looks, this pattern right here is a double bottom pattern. This pattern is one of your classic patterns that you're gonna see on any list of you know traders. These are pretty consistent. Um, notice again where the double bottom is. Here's your first bottom, your second bottom, and notice this W shape. And notice again where it's at in this zone. I did have this fair value gap, number one, I pushed out into this zone, came back to this zone, and rocket shipped in three minutes. This is a three, oh, excuse me, four minute rocket ship, basically from this zone all the way above this zone here. So classic double bottom. In hindsight, I should have entered off of this second candle. After this first candle finished with that much buying pressure, I should have entered. Uh, I was watching this um, and there's not really an excuse. I just, um, I, this is really great as well for entries. Um, you know, if you're able to, something like this has a really great risk to reward because if you recognize the buying pressure of this um, usually you can put your stop right below here and usually that's a pretty decent risk reward so if you've got your stop here and you know let's just say your target was 39.15 which was right about here um, that's a pretty decent one right you know in these double bottom patterns the good thing about the patterns is they give you pretty obvious risk areas so that you can set your stops at right at the bottom side so in hindsight, this would have been a great trade for me to take today. Um, again, not ready to pull the trigger. Still kind of scared away just from the volatility of all, everything going on today. So um, we worked our way back up to this top zone. And this was a um, pretty bad trade. Uh, but I'll zoom in here because it kind of looks like a mess up here. All right, double bottom. Okay, so we're headed up here, and um, again, notice that the the level we're testing. Okay, so this is thirty nine twenty five. So this was the pre market high from before, and again, I did not take this first entry long. I don't like first entry longs. I feel like it's really risky, and you can have a sell off. I usually like to wait for second entry longs. That's typically, in my experience, has been really good for me. So it'll first entry long break down a little bit and then second entry long shortly afterwards that tends to be tends to work out really well for me um, and that's what I did here so I entered right long right where that blue um, that blue arrow is right here and I don't know if it's hard to see but this was green uh, in hindsight 
I should have waited for the candle to finish. I did not. Um, now, my entry on this, it, it, I should have waited for the green candle because uh, I'm looking at all of these big, large wicks here, right? So we had selling pressure into here and the buyers started, kept pressing them up. We had a large green candle and a smaller red candle and we were starting to have buying pressure. So yes, I should have waited for that candle to, to actually close at that price before I got in. Um, but ended up getting stopped out for, um, what was my loss? A seven point loss, which um, that hurt, especially because I was trading seven or 10 MES. Um, that ended up being my uh, 300, 300 and so uh, dollar loss for the day. Um, this one hurt, but like, I didn't feel bad about it. Um, I felt that after that double bottom, right before, you know, I, this double bottom to me usually signifies some sort of reversal. I know we weren't, um, I know we weren't actually trending in a specific direction. We've kind of just been back and forth testing zones, but this double bottom with all of the pressure here kind of showed me that we had, you know, we may actually be reaching for new highs. So I, I was kind of bullish here. I saw all the buying that was happening. Um, maybe in hindsight, this candle should have been uh, an indication that, you know, that that's a pretty heavy candle for selling. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Learn, um, recognize that there was probably, I could have looked at book map probably a lot better, realize that there's a lot of, um, uh, order block there, a large order block there. Um, and realize that that had been rejected two or three times before today. And then I should have almost expected that to happen again. Um, and then my last trade of the day, I will zoom out again so we can navigate. So notice this kind of like these large moves in this area, right? It's, it seems to be relatively high because the high of the day at this point was 39.33. So we have 39.33 basically down to 39.20 and this whole range right here, we just, uh, it just felt like we wanted to be you know, because after the prior two days of trading, you know, there's just, we've been red for past two or three days. And, you know, it seemed like today was an opportunity to try to win some of that back for the bulls. You know, they seem like to have a lot of pressure, um, but we just got caught up in this like 15, 20 point range here that just like didn't see any continuation, ton of volume up and down. Uh, but that's, that chop is where you're going to end up getting hurt. So um, in hindsight, um, I'm going to zoom in here, this trade right here. Um, and this is, this was the second trade I was talking about that I didn't take. Um, I was prepared in a sense for this. So, and I will kind of walk you through what I was thinking leading up to it and then why I would, I kicked myself for not taking the trade because things turned out, um, almost, almost exactly as we had planned here. So um, what we're looking at is, um, let's, uh, okay. So what I'm looking at here, this is my second trade on that second entry long. So what I'm looking at is we peaked up here at 39.31.50. What I'm keeping an eye on is all of the, the long entry attempts, right? So this is the highest that we got to. Um, and what I was looking at is like the selling pressure off of it. I'm looking at the next long attempt, which if you notice was significantly lower. And then I'm looking at the next series of long attempts, which is lower than the previous right here. So we have lower highs and lower lows in a sense. The lower lows weren't there. The lower highs were there. And so what I'm keeping an eye on are these wicks these kind of drawbacks after the attempts to go long. Um, this one, what we had done is we had breaking below the zone. We had attempted to get into the zone, go long, and none of these broke out of this zone. I didn't see enough buying pressure on these two, or excuse me, excuse me. I did not see enough selling pressure below these zones for me to get short. Um, and I was still waiting on that confirmation. Um, and as we were pushing through here again, again, one wick, two wick, three wick, four wick, 
um, still barely getting above this zone here. It was really only a matter of time until we had a huge sell off into the next zone. And so um, unfortunately, I was looking to get in on this candle and I was waiting. I waited too long because again, these had broken below these zones. So I'm, I'm looking at these as like, a, you know, I'd hate to have a third, you know, a third entry short, right? So first entry short, second entry short, third entry short. I'd hate to have something along the same general uh, price line here and then have a quick rejection to the upside. And so I kind of uh, talked myself out of it and kind of got real scared just because of the sheer volatility of the day. I was really uncertain. Obviously, I, the whole day mentally, I was just so scared of the market to pull the trigger. Um, and look at my next entry was actually the chase at the very bottom of the move. I, I had major FOMO here, and this is classic textbook fear of missing out and chasing. And if I, I want to be completely transparent. I was so thoroughly upset with myself after this. I just, I could not believe myself and how I was willing to get in at the very bottom of this and try to chase it short after the bulk of the move. Um, I should have just not traded it at all. I should have been done. That should not. I need to accept the fact that I can have an idea of the trade that I want and I can have a rough plan, a rough outline. I could have a couple of confirmations, but if I miss my entry, I just need to not trade it because the entry Having a proper entry is what's going to keep your risk to reward and it's going to prevent you from getting in in the middle of a trade and doing one of the things that I do all the time, which is getting in too late, uh, you know, obviously at the bottom of the move or getting in when in the middle of the move and not having a proper um, an area for a stop. So let's just say we had a, a perfect entry on this. So like after this first candle finished right at the beginning of this candle, my stop would have been right here. It would have been probably at 39.23 or 39.24, just to give it a little bit of space because a lot of wicks have been happening. Um, that is a pretty obvious stop in my opinion, right? You, this whole peak, you know, that's a pretty obvious stop. Now let's say for lack of a you know, a, a really bad entry, let's say after this huge candle, right? And you're trying to chase. So let's say you get in here and you see this large wick right here. Where do you put your stop? Where do you, do you put your stop right at the top of that? And what happens if you have, um, what if you have one of these things again? Um, you know, a huge candle that engulfs you real quick, but then shoots you right back down. Um, or if you have a candlestick like this right afterwards. I mean, you know, the, these huge candlesticks, like they're hunting for stops and they're looking for people who got less than stellar entries, right? So I should, I, my entry absolutely killed me and it's actually laughable how bad this is. And I hope if you're watching this, you can take information and I, I hope I can show you what not to do. And that's, that is my objective for this entire YouTube channel is to is to conv like to help as many people as possible in what not to do. Like seriously, just don't do what I do. This is awful. In what world is it okay? So let's just do 3921, 3920. And we're going to go all the way down uh to 3894. So that's a 26 point move. At in what world would it be okay to get in at the very end of a 26 point move and expect to get more than 26 points after that? Like a 26 point move is, it's, it's a big move. At least for ES, it's big. And, and in what crazy world can you get in after 26 points of movement in your direction that you predicted? Are you expecting it to continue to go in your favor? I mean, I'm just, I'm dumbfounded that I was still willing to get into a trade. Just like the lack of awareness and the lack of discipline on this entry and the FOMO and the chasing is just amazing. Um, this emotionally, mentally, psychologically really threw me after this. Um, 
I kind of wanted to throw my computer. Um, I, you know, full transparency, I've been extremely discouraged the past couple of days just because of the drawdown on my account. You know, I'm, I think I'm approaching. So my, my total um, trailing loss, I can, my drawdown is 2,500 bucks. Um, I'm, that's before they cancel my account. I'm at $1,000 right now. Um, so I have $1,500 of wiggle room left and that's it. Um, so if this, if this volatility continues, um, I'm going to have to, uh, figure some stuff out, size down, continue to take three trades. Again, I did, I had my notes. I only took three trades today, education and learning. Um, yeah, it's, uh, that's why I do this. So I can, so I can go back, I can look at these things and realize that this is not what makes you a good trader. These are the kind of mistakes that are going to keep me from eventually being a good trader. Um, in completely missing a 26 point move and then hopping in after 26 points and hoping you're going to get a little bit just awful execution in every sense of the word. And, um, again, I hope you guys can learn from this. I know this has been a pretty long video, so I apologize. Um, I'm trading on an apex account. This is my funded account. They're still doing it 80% off $36 a month for their 50 K funded account. Um, link is in the description if you need it. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.